thanks everybody for joining uh, today. We're kind to uh, we're gonna try to kind of talk about um, why I believe the Vikings need to they need to draft two defensive tackles after the first round of the 2021 NFL draft. Um, a lot of different things uh, that kind of go into this. I've done a lot of research. I've done a lot of uh, done a lot of film study uh, about two specific defensive tackles. Uh, and then I've also done some more film work on another one. And we're going to get into all of this on why the Vikings need to draft two defensive tackles after the first round. But first, before we do, I have to ask you guys, that, those of you that watch us on YouTube, to make sure you guys leave a like uh, down below. Also leave a comment. helps people find the show. Uh, and also remember to subscribe. We deeply appreciate it. So there are uh, a couple of uh, key, really, position weaknesses for the Minnesota Vikings heading into uh, the 2021 draft. I, I personally think there's at least three really big weaknesses. Number one, it's the, it's the D-line. Uh, more specifically, the interior. Now, uh, after Daniil Hunter went out, yes, I could kind of see the Vikings maybe finding a way to... Uh, maybe get another edge player, uh, especially maybe as an insurance policy. Um, and if we're being quite honest with ourselves, Afadio Denebo just didn't live up to the hype, even though I think he's still going to be a great situational pass rusher. Um, but on the inside, I think that uh, there's a lot of questions. I think that the Vikings should definitely cut Shamar Stefan and uh, let, please let Jalen, uh, Jaleel Johnson, that is, walk in free agency because he's not worth it uh the way he called out the vikings fans and plus just the way he's played absolutely unwarranted so yeah let him walk i don't think the vikings are losing any any value uh in that uh from that situation so there's a couple different uh, like i said there's there's multiple different positions where the vikings need a lot of help personally i think there's uh like i said there's the defensive tackle room clearly uh is the number one for me uh, but then another one obviously uh for me is safety especially with how uh uh and you know, Harrison Smith is getting up there. Anthony Harris probably is going to be coming back. But the second one, actually, now that I'm thinking about it or that I've been looking at my notes here, it's clearly offensive linemen. It is clearly offensive linemen. The Vikings definitely need to grab uh, either a starting left or right guard, or uh, they need to grab some uh, definitely some depth at those guard spots too, because Dakota Dozier wasn't it. So they need to definitely grab some guards, uh, a starting caliber guard and a backup I, as well as I uh, I believe anyway. So. Um, and then also, I think that you could look at them maybe drafting their future quarterback uh, as well. But I don't know. But uh, just for today's video, we're going to talk about defensive tackles. Uh, and I think that there's a lot of different. Uh, there's a lot of uh, defensive tackles here that I think could really provide some great uh, things for the Vikings. But uh, there's, there's three specifically that I really want to touch on. And it all starts with me. It starts with Jalen Twyman at a pit. I love this guy. Make sure you guys look at his highlights. Um, and I even just watched regular game film because. I have no life, basically. I, I watched regular game film. Um, I watched him uh, in a couple of different games in the University of Central Florida when he got the game clinching sack uh, to have him uh, win uh, that game in 2019. Um, and there's a lot of different things you got to like about Jalen Toyman. And now for a little bit of a background, he's 6'2", 290. Um, and uh, he's kind of one of those guys where uh, he doesn't hold up so well against the run. In terms of double teams, on one-on-ones, I'm not worried about him. I think he's going to be just fine in the NFL. Um, but uh, I think that he is kind of one of those guys that just has uh, some difficulty holding up against double teams. I mean, why wouldn't you think about it? Two, three, uh, excuse me, two 300-pound offensive linemen pushing you out of the way against, oh, yeah, that's 290. It's totally understandable. So he's clearly not a run-stuffing defensive tackle, but he's got hands. And he's got pass rush moves for days. Um, a former three-star recruit. At a Woodson High School, uh, HD High School, that is, out of Washington, D.C. Um, a guy that, honestly, quite honestly, I, I like him. I think uh, if you look at him in terms of hand usage, in terms of um, uh, explosive first step off the ball, penetration, uh, things he does in, in the loop, uh, in terms of uh, the blitzes that, the, that Pitts likes to run, there's a lot of great things that this guy brings to the table. I, I truly love Jalen Twyman. I hope the Vikings get him, preferably in that third round, because I think he's, uh, in his first year, I expect him to be more of a, I don't know, not necessarily a backup, but more of a rotational player to come off the uh, uh, come off the bench and just provide that that uh, pass rush on third down and longs. And also, uh, if the Vikings let go of uh, Jaleel Johnson and Shamar Stefan, you're probably hopefully going to see more playing time out of guys like James Lynch, who in my mind definitely deserves it. But uh, that's a discussion for another day. But um, at the end of the day, I'm, I fell in love with Jalen Twyman just watching his tape. Um, just a fierce guy that always keeps coming. Um, and uh, he's got hands for days. I just love everything about this guy. Hopefully the Vikings get him uh, in that, once again, in that, you know, uh, probably third round probably is where we're going to want to get him. And I think he could be provide a lot of um, great pass rush, uh, uh, a great pass rush presence that is for the Vikings uh, moving forward, uh, more off that as a rotational role. 
Now, the second defensive tackle I want to talk about is a guy by the name of Tadero Slayton. This guy uh, is... <laughs> He is a bowling ball that just stuffs the middle. I think that if the Vikings make out with these two, uh, it'll be a great draft. Uh, a little bit of background on Tadero. 6'5", 340. That's right, 340. That's how big this man is. Um, and quite honestly, I think uh, just with the, what he brings uh, in terms of uh, penetrating uh, the run game, I think he's just he's just awesome. He really is uh, just a guy that... Um, He's you just just watch him, okay? Just watch how what he does in the middle of the, of the field there. Uh, it takes up two blockers, has to. I mean, three hundred all forty pounds of him. He has to take up double teams all the time. I think he's uh, a Linval Joseph uh, esque, but he's not quite the pass rusher that Linval Joseph is. Um, but I, I just I fell in love with this guy. Um, just a guy, a four star, a former four star recruit out of American Heritage High School. Um, signed with Florida back in 2017. Um, got offers uh, from Georgia, Alabama, Arkansas, Cincinnati, Clemson, Colorado, Duke, Florida State, Kentucky. The list goes on. In other words, people wanted him, and uh, rightfully so. I mean, this guy uh, is a big defensive tackle. Once again, 6'5, 340. Again, I, th I think he could be the starting uh, nose for the Vikings, and I think he could do a lot for the Vikings in terms of uh, stopping the run. Um, a little bit limited in pass rush. Uh, he did not opt out this season like Jalen Twyman did, but it's totally understandable. Um, but uh, in, in 2020, he recorded uh, 38 total tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, and a sack and a half. Um, and quite honestly, uh, just looked every bit of the part as a starting defensive tackle in the NFL um, in terms of getting a penetration uh, for the run game and he can also provide just some stuff with some sacks as well. So um, all in all, I, I think that he is definitely a guy the, uh, the Vikings should target. Um, him and Jalen Twyman, I think, would make a great duo uh, in, in, in just helping fix these defensive tackle problems that the Vikings faced in 2020. So, um, yeah, I think it would be uh, those two would definitely would start. But now if we had kind of like a 1C type situation or like a 1A or 1B or whatever it is, a second option, if you will, I guess the Vikings could draft uh, Davion Nixon out of Iowa. Now, a little bit of background. The, reason, the only reason... I'm really hesitant on him is again he's kind of that uh, he's he weighs more than Jalen Twyman uh, he's at 305 Jalen Twyman's at 290 um, but the, from the tape I watched he ha he does have a little bit of a problem holding up against the run not as bad as Jalen Twyman but um, he definitely has made more plays for Iowa this year he's definitely deserved some recognition but I don't think he's going to be that penetrating uh, you know two gap um, guy I think um, he, even though he, he shows the ability to play two gap, what I mean is I don't think he's going to be, be able to take up double teams. Um, even though, again, this guy def absolutely balled out for Iowa this year. I mean, you're talking about a guy um, through eight games of 45 tackles, 13 and a half tackles for loss, five and a half sacks, even had a pick six, 71 yards. Um, I mean, this guy's uh, he's looking every bit of the part of a guy that I think that can make a difference for the Vikings. Um, but if it were up to me, I think the Vikings should go after Jalen Twyman and Tedder Slayton. Mm -hmm. And Davion Nixon uh, could certainly be a guy that the Vikings target. And I wouldn't be disappointed but I hope they would get him uh, may maybe in that second or third round because he a lot of people, he is going up draft boards, which is easy to see. He's definitely a penetrating, uh, and I think he's going to be really good uh, defensive tackle in the NFL, but um, I think the Vikings need to draft to Daryl Slayton and Jalen Twyman. I think those are two great fixes as well as, you know, playing James Lynch, maybe, please, one time. I don't know. But I think that by drafting those two defensive tackles, I think that definitely puts the Vikings in a better opportunity to not only stop the run, but also get some pressure, interior pressure, um, and really fix the Vikings defensive tackle problem. So um, that's what I think. Uh, there's a lot of other defensive tackles in the, in the draft that we're also going to look out through the process, but those are the two that are popping off the charts for me after watching some tape um, and just kind of getting more to know, uh, getting to know more about these guys. So let me know what you guys think um, as far as what the Vikings should do in, uh, as with interior pressures. Are you guys looking at anybody else, anybody also really popping out to you make sure you guys like and subscribe down below leave a like and a comment helps people find the show and you guys can also listen to our latest episode uh that's airing today on itunes uh, and with that have a great weekend